Hi, this is Stephen Brower from Rant Valley Community College. This is for CSIT 256, Computer Architecture and Assembly Language. And this video was meant to be um, a demo of dump regs and registers and assembly. Um, well, I, I'm, I should clarify that. Dump regs that we're going to take a look at is a procedure that the author provides in his library. And what dump regs does is it shows the contents of the registers that are on the, the CPU. But before we get to that point, um, one of the things that was mentioned in the overview in Chapter 2 was that there was this extra length that was added here, which shows um, it's basically taking a handful of slides and showing them as being, um, well, it's taking a handful of slides and, and putting them in this file. And one is these are the general purpose registers. Um, the idea of the general purpose registers is, um, well, specifically EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX, ESI, EDI, those are going to be the six registers that we're going to be using the most throughout the semester. Some of these registers have special functions that they perform, or I should say there's certain commands built into the language that assume values are in um, some of these registers. So some of them are used for other purposes. Um, and later when we get to chapter nine, we'll see that ESI and EDI is used for array processing, for processing an entire array. Um, and so it's something that we will see later. So these six registers, uh, these here, EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX, and these ESI and EDI, those are general purpose registers that we're going to be using um, for the remainder of the semester. Um, now, in terms of, um, let me come here and do this. Um, so suppose this is um, this register, this 32-bit register, and suppose these bits representing some number is here, these zeros and ones. If we refer to the register by EAX, we're referring to the whole 32 bits. And if we have a 32-bit number in there, we would need to refer to the register by its name, EAX. If we refer to AX, we would only get the lower 16 bits of that 32-bit register. Now, in this specific case, since there actually is data up here, if we refer to AX, we're missing data. Um, so we want to make sure that if we are referring to a um, 16-bit register, that we are only referencing the 16 bits we want and not that we're missing something. Um, but the idea is, is that EAX would refer to all 32 bits. AX would refer to the lower 16 bits of those 32 bits. Um, we also have two 8-bit references. So AH would be the upper 8 bits of the lower 16. AL would be the lower 8 bits of the lower um, 16. And what hopefully this slide is showing is that, so we have a single register, a single collection of 32 bits. And if we reuse one of these different names, we're looking at a portion of the register. So EAX will give us all 32 bits. AX will give us 16 bits, the lower 16. AH gives us 8 bits, these 8 bits here. AL gives us 8 bits, these 8 bits here. Um, what we'll see in Chapter 3 is how we declare variables. Some variables we declare are going to be 8-bit variables. Some are going to be 16-bit variables. Some are going to be 32-bit variables. 32-bit variables, we generally will load in the 32-bit registers. 16-bit variables, we'll load in the 16-bit registers. 8-bit variables, we'll load in 8-bit registers. We just have to be mindful that if we do a load one way and we refer to it another way, we might get apples and oranges. So we have to be um, mindful of that. So I made a comment before about the, uh, the dump regs. Um, well, that's, oops, okay. Uh, what I want to do is I want to um, do a demo. So let me go and create a demo chapter 2 um, folder. And what I'll do is I'm going to take this project folder and make a copy of it. 
and I'll make a copy of it into this demo chapter two. Uh, remember, at Visual Studio, we don't have the ability to create a new project as an assembly project, so we kind of have to do it um, manually. Now, what I'm going to try to be proactive about is since I now have this debug folder and that's where the executable file will go, I'm going to, in my threat protection, I'm going to go to the settings. I'm going to add an exclusion of, looks like I already was trying to do it before, <laughs> this debug folder. Um, and so by adding this exclusion of the debug folder, I shouldn't get, when I do a build, I shouldn't get an error um, of the defender um, um, kicking in. So now let me go and open this demo file. Okay. And let me just, you know, at, at a paranoia, oh, that is the wrong one. Out of paranoia, okay, that is now the right one. Um, I accidentally had the wrong file open before. Let me back up. What I did is I hovered over the tab and I realized that the file that was open wasn't the one out of the demo uh, folder. I closed it, came back over here, double clicked on the main ASM, and now I'm making sure I'm in the right one. So um, um, if you're better about opening and closing things than I was leading up to this demo, that probably won't come up. But in terms of this demo, so let me do, this is me. No, I got that wrong. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> This is the ah, demo for chapter two. Um, this is six, um, three. Um, now, one of the things that the template has in it automatically is this call to a procedure that the author wrote, dump rex. And if I, let's do a rebuild solution. start without debugging, the dump regs that the author routine that they have shows the contents of the registers. Now, it will show them in, <coughs> excuse me, as 32 bits. So EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX, those four registers are listed here, and it shows them in hexadecimal. So we see the hex values that are in there. The E sign, the EDI, we see. Um, here also is the ESP and the EBP. Those are ones that we're not going to touch until um, later. <clears throat> and then the flags is something we'll talk about later. But right now I just want to focus on these four EAX, EBX, ECX, and EDX in terms of registers. So I didn't do any loading. <clears throat> Excuse me. I didn't do any loading prior to this call. And so what happens is if, if we actually were referring to these registers, what would be in the registers would be what was ever there previously. So um, now we'll see that there's a sort of a more efficient way to do this later. But if I wanted to clear out those registers, one thing I could do is I could load zero into the register. So the MOV statement, um, it's of the form, actually, let me just add here as a comment. Um, so MOV destination, comma, source. That's the, the general format that the move um, has. So this is going to load EAX with zero. And what I'll do is I'll be lazy and... I'll do the same for EBX, ECX, EDX. I'll just update the comments. Um, the keyboard equivalent of, of what I'm doing, I'm doing a Control Shift B and a Control Five, Control F5. I'm sorry, Control F5. Um, because I zeroed out these registers here, now when the dump regs takes place we see that what's in there at the present moment are um, currently zeros. 
Um, so it's when we first get the processor, what can be in the registers is left over from whatever was running before us. Um, and so we really should make sure, one, we either clear out the registers or load something into it right before um, we use it. Um, but here I just did that uh, zeroing out. So this is the zeroing out of the registers. Again, we'll see another way um, later of doing that differently. Let me just now load some specific data. So if I move into EAX, let me um, move in, well, 42, the meaning of life. Now remember this, uh, well, we'll talk more about this next week. Um, but um, when we type a number directly into the code, whoops, when we type a number directly into the code, it assumes by default it's an integer. So that 42 is an integer, meaning as opposed to a different number system, which we'll see in a bit. The dump regs, what comes out is in hex. So if I do a build and then I run this again, okay, so remember this is hex. So 16 to the 0, 16 to the 1. Well, 16 to the 1 is 16. 2 times 16 is 32. A is 10. So 32 plus 10 is 42. That's where the 42 is. So the this utility that we get from the author does display the registers, but it does them in hex. And so we might have to then convert back to the underlying uh, decimal to see if it has uh, exactly what we are uh, looking for. Um, because the other stuff that I want to show is going to be a little bit longer, I'll, I'll do that as part two. Um, so this, this ends part one of the demo of um, registers and the dump regs. Part two, um, well, part two will do a little bit more.